Hey guys, this is Spartacus here, and just the other day, Season 2 for Call of Duty Vanguard just dropped, and it came with a bunch of different things for us to experience, such as the KGM-40 Assault Rifle, the Gondola Map, as well as the new kill streak called the Ball Turret Gunner, which of course is actually a returning kill streak that we saw within Call of Duty World War II, and we're going to be covering all three of those things within this video, and you're going to be seeing it all within this gameplay. And I don't know about you guys, but my experience experience playing season two so far has not been very positive. It seems like every lobby that I get into just seems like I'm going up against some of the biggest sweats and tryhards in Call of Duty history, which I guess is to be expected because normally the hardcore Call of Duty players jump onto Call of Duty as soon as new content is added to the game. But still, like I've just been getting my ass kicked back and forth and I have like no good gameplay to share with you guys other than the one you're seeing on screen right now. And what's funny about this gameplay is that this happened as soon as I unlocked the KGM-40 and equipped it in my class and I just find it really interesting how as soon as I unlock a new weapon it puts me into a bot lobby. Coincidence? I think not! But that's enough talk about how I'm a crappy Call of Duty player. Let's go ahead and talk more about the KGM-40. I don't have too many attachments unlocked for this thing, but one thing you're going to notice right off the bat with zero attachments is that this is a very highly accurate and low recoil weapon, and it is extremely easy to actually control when you're shooting at your targets. I cannot express how powerful this thing can be because of how accurate it actually is, and it may be the most accurate assault rifle by default, if I'm not mistaken. I could be completely wrong about that. I haven't really gone and tried every assault rifle in the game just quite yet, but the KGM-40 definitely is going to be really easy to stay on target and hit all your shots. It takes around maybe three or four shots to kill, depending if you hit them, uh, where you hit them on the body, I suppose, but either way, it, once you unlock more attachments for this thing, I can definitely see it's become a lot more deadlier. When it comes to Warzone, though, I heard it's not that great. I mean, I heard it's okay, It's but it's not, like, extremely powerful and, like, overpowered by any means, which I guess is technically a good thing when it comes to a balanced standpoint in Warzone, but for multiplayer for Call of Duty Vanguard, you know, we have a lot lower health, and so it's definitely going to shred people a lot easier, and I find it to be pretty good so far when using it. I also want to mention that this weapon, when it comes to adding attachments, you're going to be changing a lot of things when it comes to its base damage, its fire rate, and its recoil pattern, and so you're going to definitely notice that with a lot of the attachments, so you could add extra fire rate to this weapon, but the trade-off could be that it has a lot less damage or maybe it has more recoil by default or you can of course increase the fire rates but of course have a lot more recoil added to the weapon as well um, and so with a gun that's like three to four shots to kill um, you know obviously you know having that extra fire rate can be very beneficial on one-on-one -on -one situations um, but also this gun it has very good mobility as well uh, something I definitely notice when running lightweight especially and so you're definitely going to notice that this gun has fast movement speed for an assault rifle and it's also very accurate and so as of right now, my opinion about the KGM-40 is pretty good. I really do enjoy using it so far. We'll have to see how it goes when I unlock more attachments. But by default, this is actually a very easy weapon to handle. And I don't think you guys are going to have a hard time using it whatsoever. That's possible it may receive like a nerf in the future. If there is like a nerf to this weapon, I would think that it might add like maybe slightly more vertical recoil to it. But other than that, I don't really know what else they could do to nerf it. Uh, but as of right now, now, it's a pretty solid weapon to use. Definitely don't think it's like the most powerful and it doesn't really take that high of a skill to actually use in my opinion. And so I think therefore the KGM-40 is going to be a popular weapon among people who unlock it in the battle pass. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Gondola map, which of course is the gameplay you guys are watching. This map is okay, I guess. It's very good map for getting your long shot challenges done with. I will admit that because pretty much every weapon in the game requires you to get like at least 100 long shots which is completely absurd, and I will admit it's very good for getting long shots, and of course snipers, snipers are going to love sniping on this map for sure, um, but of course we also have the gondolas of course that go through the middle of the map, and they basically traverse through the spawn points for both sides of the map, which is kind of interesting, so if you can get away with it, you could essentially go from your spawn to the enemy spawn just by riding the gondola, but the thing is a lot of people are going to have a line of sights on those gondolas to see if anybody's on them, and of course, most of the time, people are going to try and lay prone so that way they can't see you. And sometimes you can get away with it. I know I have been able to get away with it a couple times, but it, it's kind of a death sentence too because you're just kind of like in the open 
in there and you have really nowhere else to go. If you want to jump off the gondola so that way you're escaping gunfire, well, good luck because you're probably going to die from fall damage, which is kind of a shame. Um, but another thing is that this map isn't really like a three lane style map. It's more of a two lane style map, which is why I don't think it plays super great. I don't really have a full opinion of this map just quite yet. I do like it a lot more than Casablanca, if I'm being honest with you. But I think if they would have made it m like more of a three lane style map, or like if you look at kind of the center of the map where there's this kind of, I don't know what you would call it, balcony area where it's right underneath the gondolas or right next to them anyway. And right underneath that kind of balcony area where it has like a giant ladder where you can go up it, it's pretty wide open down there. There's not much cover you can like, like take to actually get away from enemy gunfire. And if they would have made that center part more of a close quarters area where they kind of close it off, maybe there's like more of a building down on that center part or maybe a cave even because there is actually a like kind of little cave system in one of the spawn areas, which I actually think is really cool, but nobody really goes in there because it's like almost impossible to even get to that point to the enemy spawn. And so I feel like the center portion could have been built a little bit better to cater more close quarter combat situation. We do have the actual building, like that engine room, I guess is what it could be called, um, to actually have a lot more close quarters engagement, which is great, but that's really the only area to have close quarters engagements. Like sure, there's buildings in, in both the like team spawns, but you know, most of the time you're not going to be able to enter the enemy team spawn because it's just too hard to get there. There's so many lines of sight for snipers and long range weapons to take you out. And so therefore it's really hard to perform well on this map if I'm being completely honest with you. And then of course there is the ball turrets gunner kill streak, the returning kill streak from Call of Duty World War II. Definitely one of my favorite to use in that game. It is so much fun raining hell from above and you can definitely do the same thing here within Call of Duty Vanguard. So what's interesting is that they said this was only going to last 30 seconds in the sky, but it actually lasts for an entire minute. So it's very possible they'll nerf this thing to where it doesn't last as long. But also when an enemy calls this in, you're not going to get a warning from the announcer. I guess it's Captain Butcher who the announcer is. He's not going to warn you that an enemy ball turns gunner is in the air. So it's going to catch you by surprise when it takes you out all of a sudden. And I'm sure that will definitely be changed in the future. But the ball turns gunner is amazing. And it's very, very good for using it on open maps such as Oasis. So the Oasis is a fantastic map to actually use this on, but like Gondola, for example, it is not super great to use if you're playing like the tactical play pacing type playlist, you know, because if you're playing on blitz pacing, there's a lot more people you could actually take out. And so obviously, you know, the more players, the more potential for kills that your ball turret gunner can use. But also the ball turret gunner can pretty much be easily taken out if you're shooting at it with bullets. Uh, obviously, rocket launchers are going to be pretty difficult since none of them are lock on launchers. Uh, but if you're going to have at least two people shooting down at a ball turns gunner, then yes, um, it can be taken out pretty quickly. But, you know, like the map Gondola, for example, that I was using it on, you know, it wasn't super great. I was able to get a few kills because some of the enemy players were just stupid enough not to stay inside. Uh, but for the most part, like half the players, more than half the players, I would say, were inside buildings, so I couldn't take them out. And so the ball turns gunner, you know, you have to treat it more like an AC-130. It's a giant freaking plane in the sky that you're using to rain hell from above. And so you just want to use it on open maps you know like I said Oasis is a great example to use it on and you can get a lot of kills with it and by the way this is a 12 kill streak so it is definitely one of the harder streaks to earn in the game if not the hardest because it's tied with the local informants kill streak as well and so of course I was using the uh, the field upgrade dead drop to actually help myself earn it just in case I died in like close to my 12 kill streak just so I'm able to actually earn it because like I said I haven't been doing really well since the start of the season and so I've been really wanting to actually unlock the ball turns gunner. And when I finally did it, I'm like, okay, finally, I can make a video talking about this thing. And so I'll, even though I've only earned it once, I can definitely tell it's one of those kill streaks that it's going to be more beneficial on bigger maps that are more wide open and there's not a lot of cover and especially not a lot of buildings with roofs on them. And also the fact that, you know, there's no other kill streak like this in the game because this is World War II. After all, there's not really the, like kind of advancements like in technology during its time period to have like a kill streak like this in the game, I suppose. But, you know, we had it within Call of Duty World War II. It makes sense to have it here within Vanguard. I'm glad they brought it back because this is a very fun kill streak to use. And I'm happy they added it because I'm not a huge fan of the kill streaks in the game, unfortunately. And so I really hope they do add more kill streaks from Call of Duty World War II. I think they did a great job with some of the kill streaks in that game, such as the ball turned gunner. Um, and so I hope they add more kill streaks in the future that come straight from Call of Duty World War II. And that's pretty much going to conclude today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. The K-47 
KGM-40, definitely a solid weapon to use. It's not going to be hard to use at all whatsoever. The gondola map, not quite a huge fan of. I mean, I'll definitely be playing on it when it comes to getting my long shots done because it'll be extremely easy to do so. Uh, but it's more catered to like a two lane style map, which just really does not work out whatsoever. If they were to make it more of a three lane style map, then I think it would work out much better. But it's a two lane style map and it just doesn't really flow too well in my personal opinion. And then of course, the ball turns gunner kill streak is amazing to use. Just make sure you're not using it on maps where there's a lot of indoor areas and roofs on buildings because you're just not going to get a lot of kills whatsoever with it. So either way, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Make sure you leave a like if you did subscribe to the channel if you are brand new. And of course, don't forget to follow me on Twitter to stay up to date with me outside of YouTube. And I shall catch you guys later.